Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will discuss how to use Webpack and we will divide this video into three main sections. The first section, we will discuss the theory behind bundlers. We wouldn't discuss Webpack, but rather we will discuss the theory behind bundlers. Second part, we will discuss what is Webpack, what is its architecture. And the third part, we will discuss the implementation and how to use Webpack. So, and you would see inside the description, the timestamps for each section. So you'd be able to jump to whatever section you would be interested into. So you would be interested into just the implementation, you could jump to the third section. If you're interested to understand the internals and what is the architecture behind Webpack and its theory, to be able to better understand Webpack, so you could start by watching this video. So let's start by the first part, which is what are bundlers in general? So let's get back a little in the history. So before like 10 years or 20 years, who knows, uh, any web page, you know, like it consists of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And uh, yeah, before we were using like HTML to just like build a structure or the layout of the page, the CSS to style and make like uh, colors and so on. And JavaScript was at first just to add interactions. For example, like uh, a button when you click on it, it just like shows a pop-up. If uh, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, a pop-up message to show like newsletters and so on. And there weren't much usefulness in JavaScript. This was at first. So they would just like include JavaScript, you know, like in the, the script tag. So, and files would be simpler. Like you don't have to add many things inside them. So it wasn't a problem. But later we found, okay, JavaScript actually could be used to build a single web application and using like single page application, we know like it's very useful. It could be uh, like easier to develop. Uh, we could add features better than just using HTML and CSS. We found like many benefits of this and we started to have bigger JavaScript files. So the first part, they would just like add a script tag for Bootstrap or jQuery, another script tag for your application. But the problem is you would have like a huge file with like app.js and it would have like huge things. Uh, like uh, different parts inside the application. So they started to think, okay, what about it? We start dividing these parts. So dividing these parts in other programming languages, like in Java or like in C, C Sharp, any other language, you usually have a way to include files from outside. So you could be able to include with C, like uh, hashtag include, as I remember. You could use like Java, there is import, Python import as well. So there is a native way to combine different parts of our application into a single part. But with JavaScript, this doesn't exist. So you would have to add multiple script tags. Um, so it could get very huge. Like uh, when I saw it before, like using bundlers, you would, might have like 20, 30, 40 script files yeah it, it's a sync and so on but the problem with this one you cannot maintain it you cannot build better applications so it makes developers take more time to add new features and similar with css and i know like if you see like css files when they are exploding they are really bad like whenever you would like to add a new script uh, css class you need to add like a new class and then it overwrite another class so it's very hard to maintain so they said, okay, how about we build something that would combine these JavaScript files into a single file? And this thing, we call it bundlers. So this is where the idea of combining different files into a single file and be able to process JavaScript because JavaScript doesn't have the idea of linkers and compilers similar to other languages, but it's just like, like read the JavaScript file itself. So they said, okay, Let's build a bundler. So eventually the whole idea of a bundler is that it's something that takes JavaScript files. Let's just start with this one. It takes JavaScript files, files, and then outputs a single file or a single output. But then we found that we could also not just include JavaScript file. How about we also start dividing our CSS files? How about we divide HTML5? And in this case, we're able to bundle the whole application into a single file. So this is the whole idea of bundler. It's just a way to combine different files into a single file. But not just this. For example, you are using other external libraries. You are using 
Lodash, maybe you are using uh, Bootstrap, or now you are using uh, like other new libraries, like maybe uh, Material UI, for example. Um, so these libraries doesn't change too much, unless like, of course, like you're upgrading the version, but other than that, they don't upgrade the version. So inside the browser itself, we could use caching because in like these files, when you download like these assets, JavaScript files, CSS, HTML, images, uh, font files, any type of these files are already cached inside the browser. So that, okay, how about we divide the bundles into one which is for like uh, dependencies that we rely on and the other one is our application and in this case the, like javascript file would be divided into let's go down there it would be divided into what we call vendor which is like dependencies from the external and the other one is our application and this application would be our javascript file and these things rarely change of course like if you upgrade the version in this case yeah it would change but other than that it wouldn't change much and in this case we would be able to like speed up our application so we benefit now from two things we are able to divide our files into different files so it's easier for developers to write better code and the final output will still become like a single file or multiple files as bundles could divide them like we said into vendor and application and in this case we have faster productivity from developers and we also could deliver better solution to our users so this is the whole idea behind bundlers so a bundler is just like something that takes different files or rather me drawing this thing we could go to a webpack so webpack website you would see it so it just like takes different types of files and then do things internally and then output just uh let's call them static assets they don't need to focus on these four from the image but it rather static assets which are html css javascript uh, images fonts whatever these types of assets so this is the whole idea behind bundlers in general now let's discuss the second part which is the architecture of webpack and this architecture is similar a little to different uh, bundlers and the architecture of Webpack consists of four important parts. The first part, let's uh, go to our whiteboard. So, the first part are input file, or let's call it uh, like how Webpack calls it. Let's call it the entry. And this is our input file, and it's a single file. And this file could be importing other files. So there is another file, a third file, a fourth file, whatever the number. And then it goes into Webpack. And Webpack, this is the internal part of it. And we know it would eventually send an output. And we call it output file as well. And it would be, for example, the app JS. And internally here, there are two things. The first part, there is loaders and plugins let's design it like this and we would say why so the first part are loaders loaders take the file and change its content from its original content into javascript format so this is the ultimate goal is to change things from its current content to javascript for example if you have been using typescript it would change typescript from typescript into javascript if you are importing an image because for example you started learning react and you use like create react app and you imported an image inside javascript file so in this case, there is an image loader that would parse the image file from its original file into its JavaScript content. Of course, like there is the image file itself and it's separated away, but let's just concentrate on that. Loaders change any type of file eventually into a JavaScript file. This is the first part. Second part are plugins. Plugins are 
things that are attached into webpack and it hooks into different positions inside webpack working so webpack for example as a hook uh, before loader like before loading you should do a certain task after loading you should do another task okay what is the example of this task for example i would like to build a plugin and this plugin when i import an image the loader first would parse the image so it would just like take a description of the image if it has it inside its metadata and but it's the most important part is the url of the image but the plugin it would copy this image from its place and add it inside the public folder which you finally see the image there magically so this is for example as an example of a plugin another plugin maybe it creates uh, it creates um, a generic html file so this is also an example of a plugin maybe the plugin also helps to uh, like uh, compress the file or divide it into multiple files because like we said we have like our app js not not, not draw it here like here at the output we have our app js like this is a main one but there is also we could would, would, we could say to it divide it into vendor js as well so you would have our app the main part and vendor would cont contains the external dependencies so there's also a plugin that would do that so it would do like the dividing part and we could think of plugins like it uh, like we said it's ho hooking into different part or attaching itself into different parts of webpack compilation cycle so when it's combining combining the files it would like attach itself or add different functions into different parts and we'll describe plugins as well but the main part you would normally work because this is uh, just enough webpack uh, video you would work with entry and loaders and the output file another part is that entry files could be not just like one we said like an entry file but webpack also allows for you to add multiple entries but eventually the entry is the main file that you add inside webpack and then it should import the other files so it's like um, the root of these files so this is just webpack it just consists of these four parts of course like it has many other parts but these are the just enough four parts of webpack and now after we have discussed webpack let's go into the implementation and we will describe or try to work with the four parts of webpack like we said like the entry loaders plugins and how to output the final file and we'll be able to bundle a whole application and we'll also discuss a custom loader and custom plugins like we'll discuss how to build custom loaders and custom plugins so let's start with going to a plain folder like a very empty folder and let's start with npm in it here just to initialize our application and uh, this is just like building the package.json file and we will start by npm install webpack so this is the important part and what i would like also to do in this series is to go and use the documentation just to help you to be aware of how to use it so when i come to webpack you would see like the important part like we said and then you would be able to go to the installation part and let's go into it i think it's under guides okay and getting started so this is the part where we are going to use it so let's install it here let's copy these commands and of course like i would fast forward this inside the video so it would cut now okay after we have installed webpack we can now start by creating our like an example application we'll just like run uh, create a source directly and then we'll create a file under it let's call it app.js and let's just inside this app.js let's just create a button so we we'll say const button equal document dot create element and then we'll say this element is a button and then we'll just like um, console log it we just like would like to see what by the way because this is not a javascript uh, like specific we'll just like create sample things so we created a button and we would run webpack executable which is installed under 
uh, node modules so we we'll just like go to node modules and then it's under dot pen and then we we'll just like run webpack and it would fail because it would say index doesn't exist so two things first since webpack 5 webpack 5 you don't need any configurations it like uh, you could just like use it out of the box it's already configured so you don't need to configure it and it would use usually the default things so this is the first part second part it says it doesn't find index because you remember from our diagram here we need the entry file we didn't define the entry file because we didn't define the configuration but by default webpack will try to find source index so it's for it for it it's the default file so we'll just rename app from app to index and we will try again now it compiles and this is with zero configuration and now we see our disk directly uh, directly and uh, it has a uh, like, this is the output file eventually from it and you would see here like this is what we have written under uh, inside like uh, the index and you would see everything you would see okay document.create app which has button yep you would see this part and you would see the console loop. so these are the different things inside webpack okay enough with playing around and let's have our example project i will just like copy and paste it and we will discuss it so i have copied the example application and i would copy like from time to time for it to just like have a ready-made code and it would be in typescript so the first part or the initial file that we load is index.tx and index.tx would get the app it's similar to what you see in react you would see like we are importing the app inside our application and we are defining a root so this is like the root of the application and it would have document dot get element by id because it's like getting the root and then it would append the application like we execute the app and append it to the root so we have like the root at the top and then we attach the app into it and if we go to the app.ts we will just find okay it's just like a function and this function returns an html element and it creates a div and then we create a title which have like h1 and we add like inner text for this title and then we append the title to the container and then we return the container which is going to be appended into the root so it's similar to creating like child parent and so on so the first part this is a typescript file webpack doesn't understand typescript file so the first part is we need to install a loader which will translate typescript file into javascript file so for webpack there is a typescript loader and we are going to install it and we would install it so it's ts loader so i will just npm install ts loader so it is going to install it and while it is being downloading and so on let's start by using the webpack configuration file and let's create it so we have webpack.config.js and if there is a question yes it can become a ts file but this is a discussion for another day so let's use it with the javascript file so we say modules exports equal and let's see what is the different parts of webpack so if you are interested it would be under the website and you are able to see it here under documentation and you would see like uh, the context and you would see different configuration for each one of these so the first part is defining the entry because webpack like we said doesn't know of course like it can understand index but let's suppose you don't have like index you have like another file so let's define the entry point which is our entry file and we would say it's under source and app so this is the definition of our application and that's not like sorry it's not app it's index and then ts so this is the first part and i would like the output for my application to be under here let's go to the output just to see an example of it under the documentation and you would see it defines two things you have to define the pause and you have to define the file name of course like it could be defined with other many ways but let's use the one from the documentation so it's just like copy the pause here at the top and we would copy these two things 
so we have also the output here and it would be under this so this is just like resolving to the current directory which is uh, under this file and the disk is the disk folder and then instead of my first web pack let's just call it app dot bundle dot javascript so now we have our entry we have our output now we need to define the inner stuff because we are using a ts loader we need to use a loader so let's go to the documentation and go to the loaders part so a loader needs two things it needs a regex or a way to define which file to use the loader for so the first part is the definition of this type of files or endings and use is the name of the npm package or the file that will be used to compile this file into javascript so let's copy this part and it would be all of this model module and rules so let's copy internally i would like to keep it similar to this just to have the same meaning and let's uh, format this document just to keep everything formatted yeah it's uh, this one and let's define the ts so we'd say it's under ts and we would have ts loader so hopefully it would run and let's instead of running it like uh, we run it like this let's add a command inside package.json that would say this is a build process so let's define a build process let's remove all of this and we just need to say webpack and webpack would realize this file immediately so let's run npm run build okay and it says webpack uh, cli for webpack must be installed so we need to also install webpack uh, cli so it says if you want to install it so we would say yes so it would just install the file now okay so now it's installed and it says um, these things doesn't exist let's try to run it again okay okay so the problem turns out we just need to add uh like uh, to define like this is a starting point not just like other file because it seems to go to node modules so let's run the command again and it would fire why it would fire an error because this is a typescript file and it says hey i don't have the ts configuration file for it so let's define the ts configuration and since this is also not a typescript file so we will just like have a pre uh, already made configuration so we'll just add um, json this one and i would copy and paste them sorry about that but uh, we would have like a future session about how to use typescripts and so on if you'd like to mention them you could add them in the comment and we would start to have priority for each one so let's run again npm run build okay and it says there is no a valid alias for browser and this comes to another important part so webpack like when we are trying to import files like under index we say app but what is the extension of file like it doesn't know so if i just like add the ts of course i could show error i think also ts configuration would fire uh, errors if it does exist so it says yes it you cannot use an import and you should consider this one like we, we could solve it inside ts configuration but webpack need, needs a list of extensions that says okay these are the allowed things that you could add automatically for the ts file so let's just remove the .ts and tell webpack what are the different extensions allow it to automatically add them because webpack if you see again here back you would see it tries let's uh, create the error back again so let's create it here again you would see it, it's trying to okay i would just like not use an extension okay maybe i would add the the, the gs maybe add the json maybe add the uh whoa, wasm um and let's try trying to add these different extensions because these are the default inside it so we need to add it okay these there is other config like other extensions that you could able to use and it's under webpack resolve extension so let's go to resolve dot extensions and it should be here 
so these are like different ways to resolve but we are what we are looking for is the extensions part only so with jump here i think webpack might have a problem with or uh, chrome have a problem with uh, jumping so let's go to extensions we probably need to solve it okay so we have resolved with extensions and you would see here they mention the typescript part so let's copy this part resolve extensions okay and let's add it and let's add the different ts files i need to this one and we would need yes the javascript maybe the json i would say we might not need it for now you could just like keep it as well but if you define it inside file it's better to write dot json to the, like say this is a json file this is not javascript file just for a better code okay so let's also add the ts file maybe if you are using gsx in react you would also add dot tsx as well if you would like okay let's run it again okay and now we see under the test file we compiled we have app.bundle and it have some things it's much bigger also like why it is bigger because we pack add different st stuff and also there is like uh, the declaration parts uh, these are like different things that we wouldn't discuss for now okay but we see our app.bundle.js file and it defines different things actually webpack is much bigger than this okay so i would show you more things if i add so i will show you a cool thing in webpack i will just like write them and will explain them soon so i will just like write uh, it's a configuration we say diff tools false and we say mode development okay and let's run the webpack npm run build again so it builds our web applications and so on and so on and we would go to app.bundle.js and now we see many things so we see the definition of our application and this is the content inside the app after they are being parsed by typescript and if we go a little bit down you would see here even under the like the comment part which defines like this description you would see the root application it says webpack require this is a function and we would see root dot like it's creating like the document and then we take like app one which is this one and there is the app and webpack require is a webpack internal function that requires the files and you would see the implementation of it up here a little if we go up you would see here the function called webpack require and it does the whole webpack module building so webpack consists of different modules which are these files and each file is inside a self invocating function so if you go up here a little you would see the app and you would see the whole definition of it but eventually all of these things are self invocating functions like you would see like a little bit slightly maybe i would just like apply prettier to be able to see it okay now i applied prettier so it looks better so you would see it here you would see webpack export and so on and so on and you would see a self invocating function so each module inside webpack is considered a function in itself and it is being like uh, fired so you would see here as well uh i would like to even like you would see it it's slightly here. maybe i will just like clean all these comments so you you able to see it here you would see able to see like uh, this is the key and this is the value and there is the webpack modules like the different modules inside it and it's uh, an object you would see like the start and the end of it and each one consists of a key which is the file and then you would see the missile which contains each file so each file inside webpack that's how they have um like for example when you define like a variable inside the file it's only inside the file but it's not like available everywhere so this is how so each one would have like its function or self invocating function so everything is internal unless you import it from another module it would be imported to this file but other than that it would just contain self invocating uh, function and you would see like this whole function 
like this is the app that we have built and you would see eventually we have exports dot app these are the exports that we are exporting and you would see it like it's a property coming from outside like it's coming from outside and we attach to it and then we export it and eventually this function is just like going through this dictionary and extracting this file and then it will pass it to the root variable this is how webpack internally works okay let's go to the weird stuff that i added at first so the div tools uh, the div tool part if you go to the webpack documentation you would see a description for this one and it's basically for it's used mainly for source maps so you know like when you are uh, writing the code in javascript file or ts file or whatever file you are writing and you compile it into webpack using this uh, compressed uh, thing that we saw so the browser doesn't understand it like browser would show you like the old compressed files like a b c it was just like show you like everything compressed but you would like to be able to see the whole lines like inside diff tools so this is why we have diff tools because diff tools we could also tell it to, uh, like also print to me the source map because i would like to be able to see it inside my diff tools so this is a story for another time because we would like to see just like the just enough part okay but you would be able to see it under here like you'd be able to like create source maps or sheep map let's maybe like add it here and i would add instead of walls i would add the source map let's just like move, move the mode i would describe it and let's run again npm run build and you would see the dot map file so this is the map file that the browser could be able to understand and it can be used for diff tools okay and usually we'd add it so it will it should be good in the just enough part because you would need to use it okay second part which is mood which i didn't explain it so far so uh woodpack have two modes by default you could define like different modes but webpack have two modes there is production mode and there is the development mode so this helps you if you would like to have two pipelines so usually when you are building webpack or build, like using webpack inside your application you would have the development mode that you are developing your application locally you need everything to run very fast like compilation is very fast uh, bundling getting files compress you don't need compression because it's local you don't need compression and you would like things to be running smoother on the local machine but when you are using production you would like to dissect the file into multiple files you would like to say hey i would like to have like uh, more compression i would use another more aggressive compression algorithm for example so you would like to do more stuff so in this case we would define two pipelines you would define a one for production and one for development this is for webpack as well because webpack if you pass development it would add more stuff but if you pass production it wouldn't add this more stuff so when we keep like the development part you would see the whole bundle maybe i need to close this one just to not save it and uh, let's run it again so this is compressed but if i add production i'm not sure if it would clean things up but let's see so if i run this one and if i see it it's a little a little bit smaller maybe maybe i will run development of course like it does more stuff in production and development yeah like we see it now like this is the development mode it's the whole thing it's uncompressed it's huge and so on but if i run it uh, with production you would see the whole compression part okay so now we have defined these things and it mentioned like if you saw it before in the earth it would say like you need to define them and of course we would like to define them okay so so far what we have described maybe i need to open the whiteboard so far we have what we have described we have described the entry we have described the output and we have described the loader okay now we would like to describe a plugin so this is a force part so for webpack plugins like what we said it's something that hooks during the cycle of the compilation process it doesn't have to be inside like loader entry it can be after it can be before and i wouldn't go to the description of how, like these internal hooks just now we will discuss it later in this video but let's discuss with 
plugins so let's go to the website itself and i will go again to the documentation you would see concepts and you would see plugins and there should be a list of plugins so webpack have many plugins these are by default of course like it has a huge library like there are many 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 plugins but these are the themes so we would use one of them in this video and it would be the html plugin html webpack so this creates an easy html file to be able to use it so this would be the first part so let's take html webpack plugin and let's install it i would uh where is the page to see okay so this is the installation part npm install html webpack and let's add it of course it would run faster because i already installed it before inside the cache just like does linking and so on okay so now we have okay how we can define plugins and we go down here you would see plugin and it's a new object because it's 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 on own like it's a I mean, we could think as a class but it's not like a class it could be a function as well because you know like javascript have many quirks okay so we would just like copy and paste like uh, most stuff so we would add plugins and html webpack plugin so now we define the webpack plugin and it should create a an index html file of course like we could customize but just like uh, run it so run npm build and it says there is probably a problem with my configurations okay okay it says like html webpack is not defined because i need to import it okay i need to import this one so i would just come here and Honest, this one and i would just say require we would say html webpack plugin this one of course i would fix in the future videos like the auto importer part okay and we will just come here and run it again okay now it compiles and builds and we see the index.html file and we see everything we see also the like the app bundle the JS, it adds it automatically okay so we're now able to add the index file and it would basically generate it like at the initial part it loads it somewhere and generate it at the output because it's one of the assets okay another part we would just like copy and paste this part which is the default index file i would like to have an index file that i would add also like more stuff like metadata i would like to add the icon i would like maybe add the root that we have generated so far so we would create a new folder we call it public and we'd have our index.html i would also again copy and paste it and we'll show it to you so it's just like a normal html file and there is an id and it has root and uh, yeah that's it this is the important part that we would like to add like have dev id and that's all because so far we would like to attach our application into this id of the root okay so now we have our index.html now we would like to configure the plugin and let's go to the configuration part and um pop, 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 pop. if it doesn't exist i would also just copy and paste maybe i would go to the plugin documentation because we would like to also help us improve reading the documentation and we would see it here under the template so if we go here you would see template and it takes a string and it says like the relative absolute file to the index file that you would like to import and it could be like with different formats because like this plugin is huge and it has many things we wouldn't go into details but if you would like you could read this part and you have like many formats to write index uh, files like with some like removing like adding parts and so on macros and so on so it was just like come here and i would just like copy and paste it where is our webpack configuration yep here maybe i will just also format this part okay it's already formatted maybe when i add the string it would remove the format so i open here this part and add template and i add file to it maybe i will just remove it and add it again okay and if i format it Okay, it says it's formatted already okay maybe i'll add it here 
and uh, yep uh, it's OCD sorry okay now we have uh, index HTML and if I run it again npm run build okay now it creates our index and we would see uh, our file yep because we are using the uh, production so I think it compresses maybe I would use development such just for us to be able to see everything uncompressed so npm run build and let's open the one under the list file and you would see the app.panda.js that it's already created we didn't add it here inside our index but it generated inside webpack and it takes other things from us of course you could have like for example one of the amazing things about plugin you could also like to pass like metadata stored inside other external files or from another browser not another browser another uh, github repo or so on you could like do magics with plugin and plugins are really amazing in this part it's not just like uh, index that uh, html and so on okay so let's close all these parts and we now i think have also discussed like plugins we have now discussed the loaders like these parts we have discussed loaders plugins entry and output now i would like to see like another small thing that i like to show inside webpack which is hashing so we said like webpack could have uh caching inside the browser not webpack like javascript files could have caching inside the browser but for example if you would like to generate a new file like the next version so normally you would have like uh, app.v1.javascript or some another quirk which would have like inside the script tag you would have like app.js and then uh what is it written yeah it uh, adds like some weird stuff okay you would have like app and dot js and then you would add like v equal whatever number or timestamp you would add this is was the old ways because you didn't have like webpack so in webpack we could add automatic hashing and it would basically create a number inside uh, like uh, in the name of the javascript file and in this case it would become unique so if you create a new file with different content it would create a new hash or a new hash for this file if it's the same file it wouldn't change it so in this case we could divide our application into vendor and app so let's add this hash and it's just simple as adding brackets in the output and we say hash I think yep hash and generate the file again and we see under this we see it here maybe i will just like add the dot as well just just like a habit doesn't have to but it's just like a way okay i would run it again and run to run it it would create our app yep here dot and you would see the whole bundle name but one thing is that each time we generate now like a new bundle it would just like remove uh, like add file add file add file and it would just like become polluted so i would just like append another command before the webpack just to remove the dist file uh rf and we say dist and we just like add double end okay so now we just like each time when we generate we just like remove the dist file generate it again and we have now a clean uh, folder okay so we now have these things nice besides the hash part we would also like to discuss another small stuff which is optimization of the bundle uh, the bundle that we have so so far we have only like our app uh, files that we have in our system but for example if you are relying on another external library from outside our system say for example if we have lodash so i would just like install lodash why i install lodash because it's a little bit famous everyone knows it uh, but yeah we could of course like get another library or another file that we have in our system so we just like have um, conest maybe number added and it will just take the add method from lodash did it show it yeah i think i need to fix this one okay uh okay so i would just like import and i would say add from lodash okay 
and it would say like it couldn't find the types for Lodash. Also, I need to install types. It has something to do with TypeScript. It is not related to Webpack or whatever. It just like has to do with TypeScript. Okay, so now I install the types. It doesn't come clean again. And I will just run the npm build again. It was just like delete everything. And if I go to the zest file, I would see a massive file because it now in, not just including the method not just including the app file but also including the method for add from lodash of course like this is not the whole lodash file i guess because it also does tree shaking if it's so we also need to do like more optimization but aside from this we need to tell it to like what we described here inside this image we need to have like an app and a vendor.js so in previous years if we just go back again into the list of the plugins so like before webpack like until like webpack 4 or so far like what said here they rely on a plugin called commons chunk plugin so if you are working on an old application or an old repo you would see this plugin command chunks plugin and they have like information that it is already being removed from webpack of course you could still use it like if you were able to install it and so on but they say okay we need to move away into the split chunk plugin of course, if you are using comments plugin, you would have to read this part. And it just like says, okay, I need to optimize it, get the command file, and then just like add them to this file. It's simple plugin. But let's go to the split chunk plugin. And split chunk plugin, of course, like it's more and better and so on. And it could divide the file into multiple chunks. But we will just take the important part. We would just would like to divide it into an app and and uh, vendor so i will just like copy it not all everything i will just like copy it the optimization split chunks and chunk all There's just to tell it hey optimize this file and i would go to webpack config and add these things let's just format again so i see optimization optimization split chunks chunks all okay i think it would work so npm run build Yes, it says it didn't work. Yeah, same file because we need also to because you now like telling Webpack, hey, add everything to app. It doesn't understand this thing, so we just need to rename app to name. Okay, let's do it again, and it works. If we go to the disk, now we see we have two things. Of course, like we have like this map stuff, uh, but we have vendor. This is the vendor file and we have map. We could also rename it to other names, vendor.js if you like. Okay, so we could find this thing, but I we wouldn't discuss it here. It could be like a homework or something we could try to do. But we see like here our main JavaScript file, which our original file, and we see the bundled file. So this is a separate file. And if we go to the index, you would see it's importing the two files. So in this case, in the browser, when they load the index.html so far we haven't started the application we will start it but so far if we are going to load the application like the index file we will just load these two separately so maybe let's try to load the application so if i go to maybe i would open it in another terminal because i'm doing stuff in this one and i will just cd this and HTTP, I think I have HTTP server and then dot here. Maybe if I don't have it, okay, maybe I need to install this one and and let's try to install it. So, HTTP server, of course, like there is watch mode, we'll discuss this one, but the HTTP server is just like to try locally at some. So, we just like go to HTTP server and we just copy the installation part so it might take a little bit of a while so yeah it didn't install fast okay so i was just like http server yes i need maybe to add like more stuff uh yeah i installed it internally maybe yeah i added inside the disk probably okay yeah it's added outside okay whatever uh maybe i will just like use the npx just to make it faster okay so we are inside the list file yep we started we just like copy it of course like it could be local host 8080 
maybe I will just like write it localhost 8080 now we see it you see the application title at the top if I open the inspect and yeah uh, I need to uh, one second okay now I think it's better so if I refresh you would see our two files you would see the vendor file and you would see the main file and they are two separate files of course we could compress it using the production mode and so on but we now have two separate things and in this case so in the future when we change anything inside our application it will just affect the main file and in this case we still have caching we still have fast application and so on and all these good things okay so so far so good we have now covered all the important stuff now this is the advanced part which is writing custom loader and writing custom uh, plugin so i will also copy again more stuff so let's just like close this test file and yes in one moment i will just like take this part and copy the application this is the real application okay so I have copied the sample application and what we would like to do in our custom loader what I thought of we could have a tree parser so it's just a file we call it dot tree it has like an extension dot tree and we define it into it like there is a root there is like stem and each stem have branches and each branch have different leaves so basically we are trying to create like a tree and we would like to pass it somehow into uh not somehow we would just like import it inside our app.js and it is going to be parsed into javascript file and we are able to use it directly here inside our application so i would just like import uh, so we just like add this is the only part that i changed so far and i would also import um like some definitions just to avoid like all these hurdles like in errors and i would just like add it here maybe i would add it under details okay maybe i would add it at a later point okay so i was just uh, but we know like there is errors here inside the type definitions we would add like a separate file this is just something related to typescript uh, something away from all of this so i will create my custom loader let's get back to the loader thing so I will create a file called utils or a folder called utils and then I would import or add the tree loader. I will also, sorry, copy and paste and explain it. So this file, you read it, of course, like all of this code that I am copying and pasting, there will be already in a GitHub link. I would add this link in the description. So you would see here that we are just like reading, reading lines and then trying to parse this line uh, like uh, for example like using this arrow using um, regex and so on and then I would like to start creating my tree object by part like traversing the whole object and creating the whole tree so this is just doing all of this but it's important stuff this is like internal method what is a custom loader a custom loader is just a method that takes files like not files it takes content strings the things that you already pass it so it's a content of the um like the file itself and then it returns strings as well so it's just like text string and return string but because we would like to return it as a javascript string we'll just export default you could export object and then you export the whole string that you would like and in this case we just create inside this function we just like create the whole tree and then we take the tree dot root like the root element inside the tree that we have created json stringify to change it into a string and then it's export default to allow us just to like import it like this for example i could just like rename it like this for example if it's going to be root and other element inside the tree okay but we'll just like export default so this is the first part so now we have the file for the custom loader how we could use it inside webpack configuration we will just like add a new rule and you would say this is a new rule for trees so we'll just add rules and we add it's a dot tree and we would say instead of the ts loader we will like import the file itself so we'll use the pass resolver and in this case we will just use another thing so we'll just like add this like that of course loaders could be also written in another format i was just like use this one 
the sync it probably is going to fail so if i run it it would fail because of uh, the types stuff because it says okay i don't know these things so we would also import yeah it says like need custom loader so custom loaders need to be imported in a different way not just using use but rather the whole bigger format of it so we need to open this use and we need to have an array in this case and i would just like copy and paste it again okay i would add it under not under here actually it shouldn't be under rules like everything should be under this object so i open this one I open this one and then I add a comma and add my test rule okay let's just start format so it's just like the different format is that we have like use here is a different we would add loader and define the password how we know this is a way to do it we could go to webpack documentation again and we could search for custom loader I think it would show this part. Okay, maybe it doesn't exist directly here. Custom loader webpack. Because it's all of this is helpful to read. So you would see here the custom loader and you would define it like what we said. Like it was just like use loader and then you pass the JavaScript file that you created. Okay, if I run it again, it would fail because of TypeScript. And I would also sorry again would copy the typescript definition so i would just add it inside utils and it's just like internally inside typescript you would say okay this is three it's a it's a type of name it has like name children and also any file like dot three uh, it has like this uh, it, it exports these definitions so basically what we're saying here is that for a dot three files it's a module and it exports by default a tree so it's just like a definition and all of this are inside the TS config for another day. Uh, okay, let's repeat it again. And it should build this time. So now it builds. Okay. And if I go to my webpack course, if I refresh, I should see it. Yes. Now I see the tree. I need to zoom in a little bit. So now I see my tree. So it traversed, it created like the tree from the file that we already passed it as uh, like a document. And we have root, stem, right branch, left branch, and we have everything. But like doing all of this is not nice. We would like to have a watched command. I should maybe describe it at first uh, because if some people left the video uh, until now, so there is just a serve command we we'll just like uh, add it inside the webpack.json so if we go to web uh, package.json and we add a new command and we call it serve just to be able to run it faster from here and we just like run webpack serve so it's just like serving the whole and it would request from us i think like to install a plugin the dev server i would like to see the error because it would help us to understand how we debug so if we're npm run serve this is the serve that you run it from create reactor it says okay would you like to install the dev server yes i would like to install it so install webpack dev server okay so now it's about to finish yep it installed the webpack dev server and now it started a webpack dev server and it would watch the file when we try to change it and it would show to us like which port it is trying to listen to uh pop, 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 pop. if it doesn't exist i already yep this one because it's like this thing already on uh uh like 80 80 80 so i maybe like close this one and also we don't need the other html server and let's run it again npm run serve to run it under 80 80. now we have auto reload so maybe let's try to change the colorful tree from green capital to maybe not the whole color let's say black and let's see it's refresh it's refreshed the pipeline and we because i think we didn't reload at first so we see like black and now it created like uh, the sockets to, to listen to changes let's change it to brown refresh and we see it i didn't refresh it's it's automatically doing it like using watches so 
we have now let's get back this is a bonus part for people who stayed uh we have like uh, we showed like the custom loader now we show the custom plugin okay custom plugins are a little bit advanced in webpack and we just like cover the custom parts so this is like the extra part here so uh, maybe we describe it inside this part i would create just a new page okay so webpack like inside a plugin it would be like there is a whole cycle it consists of like i think like it said um, seven parts inside webpack to do the whole completion process but basically like in all these steps we could say okay in this part i would like for you to execute like a certain piece of code and in this part i would like for you to execute this part and similar in this part i would like for you to execute another part so this is thing inside webpack we would like to execute different stuff okay but uh, i would like to hook in this part and webpack allows for me to hook on this part and it is using a library called tapable and tapable allows for us i think it's even i'm not writing it correctly i could show it to you here on the browser if i go here okay tapable this one so this is a plugin used by webpack to do the whole tapping and it's again of course like you see it's a huge number of installs one day one day okay maybe i will just zoom a little okay so now we see it so this is like a plugin that we were able to hook into different part inside the code and say okay execute this method execute this method and it attached this method like like we we're saying it could attach something that sync a sync parallel series what like whatever ways to attach these functions this is the way of how writing a webpack and webpack plugins you do it with whatever way you would like to do it but it requires one thing it requires a function or like any method uh, maybe i'm opening the wrong page it should be this one and it should have like an apply method it should be something and it has an apply method. maybe it's a function and one of its objects it's apply like you know like javascript is a little bit weird but let's say it's a class so a class have a method that says apply and this apply we would pass the compiler of webpack and then we are able to hook to different parts inside webpack so this is the idea of it so it's a compiler dot hooks dot done like for example when the whole compilation is done uh, we would say tap uh, and say write something like this is a console look so this is a second this is like the second argument the first argument should be the name of the plugin so you would say like your name of the plugin is just like convention inside webpack you would just like pause the name of the plugin and the second part would be the things that you would like to do maybe picking files and throwing them away or maybe just like uh, getting stats most of the stuff is do doing like more complex than this and uh, yeah so this is like uh, in gist of it it's just like have an apply method and you just pass the compiler and the compiler could have compilation because there is a compiler and there is a compilation inside the compiler like a single one okay how to see all of these stuff you would jump into throw all of this you would see like under custom hooks like there is a list of the different hooks the system have and it has a huge list um i think it would be able to hook i think yep so these are like the different hooks inside the system like you see this is like under the compiler hooks and there is also compilation hooks. so these are uh, like the different parts um yeah like javascript parser there is like context module factory of course like most of this stuff um i like i didn't work with them so far but i have like some idea about them. you would also like see the compilation part like different process inside the compilation doing chunks like it. it's many many things like of course like you don't have to memorize all of this but when you would like to use it you just like become aware okay i would like to hook in different parts and you would be able to know that webpack could do many things just being aware of how the pipeline itself work you would be able to create custom plugins like the HTML plugins that we're using uh, like css uh, minifier maybe using a plugin that takes metadata inside the file and create another file with metadata which metadata could be the documentation for your application 
this is an example of a plugin there is a huge plugin maybe you have heard the name of it which is called module federation this is maybe for another day but this is also an amazing plugin that helps you like to get javascript in your application from an external application file it's more than this it helps a lot when we have like huge repositories working into but this is like for another day but this uh, part inside the plugin system is huge so enough of all of this let's write our custom plugin so let's go to utils and i would just also copy and paste again and add it under utils and we'd have a tree plugin tree plugin will just calculate the number of three files that we have in our system so let's just like copy and paste it and it would have like again it would be a class maybe i should format it uh, maybe it's okay i will just like explain it so we have like a tree plugin class so this is the first part and we have like the apply message that we describe and we pause the compile and we say compiler dot hooks dot done when you are done and we say the plugin name that we say and then we pause the stats so these things we'll just like take like inside the stats we have like stats dot compilation dot modules how i knew about this i just like playing around with some console logs and so on and we have stats dot compilation dot modules and then i filter through all of it and try to find the dot three files and then i would just like uh, do some checks inside it to make sure this is like the dot three files that we would like to do uh, from its methods and so on and this is just like a, a like an if condition like an uh, a lazy if condition if we'd like to think of like it's a module dot sources resolve data and and if it exists then needs a pass and then take the pass of this module that we found and then check if it has dot three at the end if it has it then we'd say like start like taking them and we'd say okay i have found this number of three because we are just like filter and then we take the length of it so we'd say okay i have found this number of three so this is just like uh, the three plugin okay so we have created it we just like import it inside our system because we have to so let's import it i would just again take this part so we import the plugin and then tree plugin and we would say here under plugin new tree plugin and we would just um, yeah maybe close this one clear and npm run build so it's just like going to build it and you see the line here found one tree file so we could have like more than this file maybe i would just like copy and paste and let's try it so let's say rename instead of this let's say color for tree two and of course we have to import it because it wouldn't be aware that it exists so inside the app the ts i'll come here and then import color for tree two let's just like console log it because if we didn't it wouldn't find it and wouldn't use it and then it would forget about it and let's run it okay it didn't find it i think it maybe didn't import it yep we didn't import the whole file because we added two two okay and this one found two three files so now it works so this should cover most of the stuff and we would give a last bonus part so this should cover most of the things that you would work with webpack like most of the custom stuff one last thing which is debugging webpack itself so so far we have built like a, 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 like a custom loader we have built a custom plugin but we don't know how it worked internally like how it how we how we could debug it like yes we could use like console logs and all of this stuff as for example you have like a huge repository and you have to implement all of this so it's a little bit hard to debug it so webpack since it's a node.js application we could debug it using node.js so how we could debug node.js it's super easy inside uh, webpack like uh, with node.js application so we just like search for webpack debug or debug webpack or debugging whatever the name and it just like have we add like just an extra 
command inside our node application which is inspect so this inspect would allow us to debug the node application through the diff tools inside the browser how they are doing they are communicating with each other like the browser could communicate with sockets and so on with the application but this is not the most useful one the most useful one is inspect break so why is useful one because when you try to inspect a web uh, why to you try to inspect webpack because it's a node.js it doesn't know where to stop like it would start the application so it doesn't know where to stop so the better way to do it is to use the inspect break so inspect break would stop at the first statement so that's why it helps i think this also would help if we add like a debugger statement inside it but uh, let's try this first one maybe also we could try the inspect let's try the inspect so what we just run it we would just run node uh, i think inspect with webpack so instead of running webpack here like this one directly inside webpack so it's just like node this is a node application that way because it's a, a command inside node file so we'll go to node and we'll say node modules like uh, i would say it here maybe we need to pass the inspect part at first so inspect and then node modules dot pin webpack because we're trying to inspect webpack itself of course like it ran because it didn't stop so maybe if we add the debugger statement so debugger is just related to the uh, like chrome browser i think it wouldn't stop so if i write here debugger this one and let's run it again i think it wouldn't stop because it needs a whole break statement so yeah so it needs a whole break because it needs to break at the first spot so I was just like add inspect dash break. So this is how we are going to stop. So we are saying to it, hey, break at the first point. So we just like inspect break. And now start the webpack, but it just like stopped. It doesn't continue. So if I come back here and open the inspector in Google Chrome. So I would just, uh, I think I saw it. Yeah, this one. Chrome inspect. So I would go here and I would increase the font size and I see it here, node modules dot pen dot like uh, the webpack thingy application and I would just like open the inspector and if I grab it, I might need to go to a new desktop. Okay, so this is uh, dev tools and it stopped at the first line inside webpack. So let's fast forward to the debugger statements that we added inside the order. So if I just like go to the next one, it will just like run a little and then stop at the debugger. And now I have access to the debugger uh, that we have inside, uh, like our applications that we added and we stopped. And now we have access to the whole diff tools things that we love. So now we have content, content, this is the file from the tree file. And now we have it inside the index. And now we know how internally we could debug custom loaders and custom plugins and you, of course like you are able to step through step and do whatever you like and of course if uh, you close it it would still and it is now not so i think this is all of it of course like if you have any questions please leave them in the comment and i would be able to like uh, answer them and if we can't like uh, we'll try to search and find them and yeah i think this is everything that should cover just enough webpack everything that you probably would need during your job this is what i have seen so far in multiple companies and yeah this most of the things that you would need more than this it's a little bit of course like if is there something that uh, didn't describe the documentation is open and of course like the comments if any questions you would like to leave so yeah i hope you like it if you have any comments leave them and don't forget to like and share and see you on the next video ciao